Do you know Nate Silver? Nate Silver is a major pollster slash statistician. And in 2016, he gave President Trump no chance. Joining us now for his take on the race for the White House, Nate Silver, the founder and editor-in-chief of 538. Now, Nate is the ultimate political numbers cruncher. He called 49 out of 50 states in 2008, ran the table in 2012. So we're going to get your forecast now for 2016. You deal in probabilities. So what are the odds you're putting on the race right now? So right now we have Hillary's about a 75 or an 80 percent favorite. We have different versions that of the high. forecast you can look at. So, Ladies and gentlemen, I am officially running for President of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. And then, of course, there's Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. <laughs> Do it. Do, do it. Look, look at me. Do it. I will personally write you a campaign check now on behalf of this country, which does not want you to be president, but which badly and wants so, you to And so, right now, Mr. Trump, to answer your call for political honesty, I just want to say, you're not going to be president, all right? It's been fun. It's been great. I love you. But... <laughs> but come on, come on, buddy. All, let's say, cow poo poo aside, there is zero chance we'll be seeing you being sworn in on the Capitol steps with your hand on a giant golden bar. And which Republican candidate <clears throat> has the best chance of winning the general election? Of the declared ones right now, Donald Trump. <laughs> That state of the union address, and no part of your mind or brain can you imagine Donald Trump standing up one day and delivering a state of the union address? Well, I can imagine it uh, in a Saturday night skit. And Mr. Silver explained exactly why Mr. Trump was going to go down in flames. Here's how to think about it. Um, we're kind of at halftime of the election right now, and she's taking a seven point, maybe a 10 point lead into halftime. There's a lot of football left to be played, but she's ahead in almost every poll, every swing state, every national poll. Um, both candidates have a lot of room to grow. I mean, she's at only 43%, Trump's at 37% or so. But historically, the last candidate to blow a lead this large was in 88, Michael when Dukakis. Dukakis had a big lead coming out of the spring and the summer and wound up um, losing, of course. And this time, Nate Silver had Donald Trump losing in a landslide to Joe Biden. But I have to level with you, Trump is starting to get deeper into underdog territory. There are really three things that make his path harder than it was four years ago. First, Trump's numbers are on a downward slide in several key swing states. In the 538 averages, he's now down 11 points in Michigan, 10 in Wisconsin, 8 in Pennsylvania, and 7 in Florida. Second, there are far fewer undecided voters today than in 2016. In fact, Joe Biden is already above 50 percent in national polls. It's pretty rare for that to happen so early. The last candidate to do it was Ronald Reagan in 1984. And in some recent swing state polls, more than half of voters already say they would not even consider voting to reelect Trump. Third, there's what we call the fundamentals. In 2016, Hillary Clinton was trying to win a third straight term for Democrats amid a mediocre economy. Not so easy, actually. But this time, it's Trump who's on the defensive. 56% of voters are unhappy with Trump's handling of COVID as cases continue to rise in many parts of the country. Voters also haven't liked his reaction to nationwide protests. 63% now disapprove his handling of race relations. And we've seen some of the worst economic data since the Great Depression. Okay, that was June. But as the election approached, Mr. Silver remained bullish on Mr. Biden. Headline, Trump can still win, but the polls would have to be off by way more than in 2016. And he said, and I'm quoting, according to our forecast, President Trump still has a chance at a second term. A 10% chance, to be more specific, close quote. And consider the pounding this man has taken in four years. I mean, a third of the Democrat delegation boycotted his inauguration. Several never attended any of his State of the Union speeches. They tried to invoke the 25th Amendment, arguing the man was mentally unfit to hold office. A two and a half year collusion investigation. The man was impeached. 
He contracted COVID-19 and he's still standing. Check out this montage about how he has been taking a hammering from our friends in the main screen media for the last four years. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. America first. When he said today, America first, it was not just the racial, I mean, the, I should say racial, the Hitlerian uh, background to it. There was an America first committee. They were infiltrated by the Nazis. Many of them were anti-Semitic, part of why they weren't alarmed by Hitler's rise in Germany. Outside of the Civil War, World War II, and including 9-11, this may be the most cataclysmic event the country has ever seen. But he's just disgusting to look at. Uh, he's obese. He's one of the repulsive, physically-looking human beings I've ever seen. Absolutely no morals. Who's a bully, who acts like a bigot and a racist, and is a sexist and a sexual harasser. The case for impeachment has never been stronger. The evidence never so riveting. Are you suggesting that President Trump should face impeachment? Another member of Congress wants him impeached. There's growing talk, at least, about impeachment. What is your case for impeachment? The first day of public testimony in the impeachment inquiry, opening with a bombshell. And we got the bombshell. A, a bombshell. A bombshell. Bombshell. One bombshell after another. Bombshell after bombshell. We're bracing for potentially an explosive opening statement. Explosive week. It's explosive testimony. Explosive. Truly explosive. The most explosive thing. This is a slow motion explosion. How explosive? Very explosive. And I think it will be explosive. Wow. Donald Trump feels the walls closing in. Really kind of the walls closing in on him. Walls closing in on him. The walls closing in on him. There is a non-trivial chance that if Donald Trump loses the election, he ends up living out the rest of his days in prison. But here's the question. Would you like to see President Trump in prison? Do you want to see the president in prison? Do you think Trump could end up going to jail? He could actually face jail time. Donald Trump could end up in jail. In prison. If he ends up in jail, so be it. You are pathetic. From a journalism point of view, Donald Trump is a brain-eating disease. How stupid can you be? This president has radicalized so many more people than ISIS ever did. His ignorance could pose a profound danger to every single person in this country and literally every inhabitant of the planet Earth. No, we won't. Call them fascist comments. Fascist. Fascism. Fascist. Xenophobic. Racist. Demagogic. Sexist. Autocratic. Donald Trump's a fascist. Someone like a fascist or a tyrant or an autocrat. Fascist. Hitler. Hitler. Adolf Hitler. 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 Well, Hitler. 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 He could well be just an empty man, an empty yeah. human being with no soul. Donald Trump blows Vladimir Putin like they are illegal immigrants hiding in Putin's <laughs> and he's got to suck them all out. In fact, the only thing your mouth is good for is being Vladimir Putin's holster. Oh, and they were cocky. I, I am not the least bit concerned about the outcome tomorrow night, and I'm not the least bit concerned that we're going to have to wait weeks or months to find out what the result is. We're going to know, and we're going to know pretty early. I mean, really, really cocky. Under no scenario will Donald Trump uh, be declared a victory, a victor on election night. And we think that that's really fundamental to how we want to approach tomorrow. <laughs> well, they thought they had a landslide. And who knows, they may not even be able to keep control of the Senate. Now, I don't know what's really going to happen ultimately with the presidency and with the Senate. All I know is the people on the left sure don't want to see this gentleman again. <laughs> Give my uh, remarks to all of the Trump haters, all of the Hillary Clinton supporters, all of the people that said uh, that my Trump was going to lose. So I say to you this morning, the day after the election, Can you say deja vu? <laughs> I'm Larry Elder, and we've got a country to say. I'll see you next time.